What's going on, you 3D modeling beast? This is JL Musi. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to quickly and efficiently add thickness to any object within Maya. How this video came about is I got a comment on one of my hard surface modeling videos asking how to do the equivalent of a blender solidify or a max shell operation. And Maya doesn't have a specific uh, tool for that. And I'm actually gonna be showing you three different methods for adding thickness to a hard surface model within Maya. So you're able to add thickness in any scenario. And that's a great reminder of if you have any requests or ideas uh, for future videos, just go ahead and drop them in the comment section. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to smash the subscribe button and enable notifications as I do Maya hard surface modeling tutorials like this all the time. So the first method of adding thickness, and I think the easiest one, is to actually model from the inside out. So I'm gonna go ahead and select uh, this piece here of my brake lever and just isolate it here. Bring up the uh, channel box here. And I'll just straighten it out. I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate it here. Most of the time, us 3D modelers model from the outside and then thickness is actually an afterthought. And we model from the outside and we try to go in as far as extruded inward, but that could actually cause problems. So here we have two pieces and what I'll go ahead and do is actually uh, go ahead and delete the inner part of one and then the outside of the other. So here's the outside and here's kind of the inside, right? Most of us modelers will model out the shell and we figure, hey, you know what? We need thickness. What's the best and easiest way to go around this? Well, if you ever tried extruding in and playing with the thickness and giving this a negative thickness, you see that it kind of works, but it can be a pain in the rear end to actually clean some of this up. So you could access your modeling toolkit and just uh, enable a surface slide. And you can go in here and start moving components around, but this can be time consuming and very tedious. Uh, you could also just go in here and gut some of these out and just rebuild it properly. And this is a relatively simple shape, so your workload would exponentially grow if it was a more complex one. Here, you see that since we actually planned ahead and we modeled the inside, right, the inside of the thickness to extrude out, uh, the process of thickness is actually gonna be very, very simple. So for this object, before you extrude out, you'll probably wanna kill little edges like this, holding edges, so I'm gonna go ahead and quickly kill all my holding edges before extruding out because that will cause an issue. Now that we have just pretty much the raw shape here, I'm gonna select it, extrude out, and then give this a negative thickness. And you see how easy that was to actually uh, get a clean thickness without any uh, manual modeling. Uh, from this point, uh, obviously this is all black because the normals need to be reversed, right? So anytime your mesh is all black, most likely the normals need to be reversed. So you go to mesh display, hit reverse, and voila. And then you could just go back in here. And if you need to add any holding edges for this, you could easily do so. And here's our finished model with thickness and holding edges added. Next way of adding thickness or really just tweaking the radius uh, is actually pushing or pulling along the normal uh, with the move tool. So let's go ahead and get an object here, something like a cylinder. And we're gonna go ahead and add quite a bit of divisions here along the height. Let's go ahead and elongate this as well. So I'll do something like 20. I'll add a little bit of detail. So I'll select this uh, loop here, go to select similar to select all the other loops. I'll go ahead and bevel these just to add a little bit of ribbing detail. I'll go in here and select uh, these two loops. Middle mouse click select to reduce select similar. That was the last menu command. You see that all these got selected. So now I'll go ahead and extrude and just add some ribbing in here. So I'll just go down on the thickness like so. Now we have this nice uh, ribbed uh, cable. 
And what we could do from here is if we needed to tweak the radius at this point, since it's pretty much up and down in the world, it'd be a lot easier, right? With the scale tool and this filter here that just filters out the X and the Z axis, we could tweak the radius, right? The problem that we run into is that if this was already bent to place and our history was deleted, we would no longer be able to do this, right? So if I go in here and add a deformer, so I'll just add a bend. So deform non-linear bend. Go in here and just bring up my channel box. Just give this guy some curvature. And let's just go ahead and delete the history here. And now if we try the same trick, no matter which axes we actually pick, it's not going to work, right? Now this is all pretty much just baked into place and tweaking the thickness with the scale will be very, very hard. Luckily for us, if we go to the move tool and we pay attention here, we can see that control middle mouse and drag will move the components along the normal. So this is exactly what we need in this scenario. So if I go in here, double click my verts, and then do control middle mouse click, you see that I'm effectively altering the radius of this, right? And I'm still getting some pretty predictable results. The last method of adding thickness is what I call the duplicate and stitch. So if we go in here and we take a look at the inside of this part, so I'm just gonna go ahead and isolate this. We really don't need a perfect shell, right? So if we were to take this and just extrude it in or out, it really wouldn't work. Uh, and this kind of has a particular shape on the inside that if we were just to do the method uh, that I did previously, probably wouldn't work. A lot of times you don't have the luxury of modeling uh, from the inside out as well. So this is a good alternative. But in this case, I wanna build out this uh, interior thickness here to connect to this part. And in this example, since we basically need a rod to go all the way through here, we really don't wanna have to remodel all this. So what we could do is actually take existing parts of the outside shell and then push them towards the inside and then close the gaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this ring here and just grow my selection. And then holding down tab, I can go ahead and add to that selection as well. So from this point, I pretty much have the faces that I wanna work with. And I'll go ahead and go to Edit Mesh and Duplicate. And what this is gonna do is gonna keep these faces, but it's gonna create a copy of these faces onto a separate object. You can see that they're grouped within this poly surface, but if we click down one, we'll see that we have our new mesh here. And I'm gonna go ahead and center the pivot. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it roughly here. If you wanted to be more precise, instead of eyeballing this, what you could do is hit D to enter edit pivot mode, hold down V to vert snap, and then you can vert snap right here. And then you could activate the move tool again, and then hold down V again and just snap here. So we're flush with this. Now that I'm snapped here, uh, we see that uh, these uh, faces here are all black. That's because the normals need to be reversed. So I can just go ahead and double click the mesh here, go to mesh display and set reverse. That's gonna flip the normals around. And then lastly, uh, we really don't need this extra detail here. So what I could do is just double click this, delete this. Now this is on its own polygon island, which will allow me to double click and delete. So now the next order of business is gonna to be to select both of these objects, do a mesh combine. We can go in here, take all the verts, merge them down. And now this is one solid mesh. So just to finish this out, into a clean a wall here. What I would probably do is go in here, double click both these edges here, shift right click. We can access the bridge tool. That's gonna bridge that up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take both these edges here, activate my move tool, hold down shift, and just extrude up like so. And then just give this roughly the angle that I would need take these edges here and then just move them on over. I can take these faces here, delete them. And then with my multi-cut tool, I could start pretty much just matching these up and have enough divisions 
just to create a clean bridge. And now if I go to shift right click and go to bridge, you see it's going to get confused. So what I like to do sometimes is just uh, basically kind of block out the bridge and then bridge in what's between. So now I'll just hit G to redo that. And then select both of these guys, hit G again. And now this bridge on the inside should go a little bit smoother. So, and it was the same exact selection. So if you ever have issues with the bridge, just try doing a couple strips first and then selecting what's on the inside. And then just to finish this out, we can go in here. Take this range, extrude out, holding on shift. You can do the same thing as before. Hit D, V, just the vert snap here on that corner. And now we can hold down V again, multi-cut, drop an edge here. And then what I'll do is just redraw this guy. Take this one out. We'll go ahead and merge. And there's the custom thickness that we built, uh, mainly using the duplicate and just some manual modeling techniques. Thank you so much for tuning in, folks, to this Maya hard surface modeling tutorial where I showed you how to apply uh, thickness in three different techniques as always go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know how i did make sure to smash that like button and please consider sharing this with any 3d artists that might find value in this information until we meet again folks i will catch you next time